ஸ்ருதி புராணமாலயம் லோகசங்கரம் ஓம் நமோ பகவதே ரமணாய கிருத்திமோதோ பதனம் கிருத்தி மகோதோ இது சிங்கிள் சமாசாஷ்வதம் கதி நிரோதகம் சோ யூ சி ஃபலா இஸ் வாட் பீப்புள் டூ யூ வாண்ட் ஃபலா எவ்வரி பிரேயர் ஹேஸ் ஃபலஷ்டி இட் இஸ் கண்டேஜியஸ் There are prayers like Prapasmarana Stotra, which has a Phalashtati, which sounds very meaningful. By recollecting or, or by dwelling upon that Swarupa every day, you grow into that wisdom, into that self-knowledge. That is the Phalashtati. Phalashtati should be like that. புத்திரார்த்தேலபதி புத்திரம் தனார்த்தேலபதி தனம் விசார்த்தேலபதி விசாம் கன்யார்த்தி கன்யாம் லேட்டு ராங்லி நாட் பிரணோம்ஸ் மகா பிரணோம் நாஸ் கரெக்ட்லி டோன்ட் நோ தி டிஃபரன்ஸ் பிட்வீன் சமாச அண்ட் செப்பரேட் வேர்ட் and uh, you just recite and so you know you because you desire a kanya you should get a kanya before desiring you should deserve <laughs> that is better you know when you deserve, if you deserve a kanya kanya will come after you <laughs> so this is phala phala is a huge problem it is like uh, samsara is compared with the tree anyway so you are falling down from the tree fall adhogachanti tamasa falling down from the tree would you hold on to your branch or to your fruit you hold on to the you hold on to the fruit and see what will happen is phala people do No, no, what to say of them? Then when they are all the so-called Acharyas and Gurus who join the crowd, <coughs> seeking Phala themselves and promoting Phala, so what to say? You can only do a Namaskar and keep quiet. Jirna Mange Subhashita. The good word feels like speaking, but you don't speak. because there is so much resistance when you try to put some sense into the other person's head there is so much resistance and sometimes the resistance becomes organized look at that so in any case we have to say the right word you know you cannot be you cannot practice expediency it is not proper So you have to say the right word. Throw the political correctness into the dustbin where it belongs <laughs> and say the right word. Phalam Ashashvatam. You see, every word you have to understand correctly. Phalam Ashashvatam means what? You see, what is uh, this uh, Nechaya? Then I will come to it. So, Phalam is in the flow of time. It begins and ends. That is in the flow of time. Whereas, uh, the goal is a timeless reality. And so, while uh, fixing yourself in the flow of time, through Phala, you cannot hope to reach beyond the time, into the timeless. That's why Gati Nirodha comes. ஃபலம்ஷாஷ்மதம் ஃபலம் அதையவ கதி நிரோதகம் ஸோ ஆல்சோ ஃபலா கிறிஸ்டலைஸ் ஆர் ரீஎன்ஃபோர்சஸ் த இகாலிட்டி த பெர்சன் இஸ் ஏ டெல் யூ யூ டோன்ட் மைண்ட் மை சேம் திஸ் திங்ஸ் 
I say it out of love, it is a labor of love. You say you are a student of Vedanta, you claim. And then uh, very soon you start to claim you are an Acharya of Vedanta. Now, I am asking you a question. Are you a person or are you impersonal awareness? What are you? Be fair to yourself. You don't need not answer me. Within yourself, if you if you still take yourself to be a person and you are still living the life of a person, person is a shadow cast by the body mind and the truth, by the truth. That is what the person is. That is the shadow. Even the shadow is related to the truth. But the shadow is only a shadow. And so you live the shadow life. You may be studying Vedanta, you may be teaching Vedanta, but your life is a shadow life. And hence the Vedanta, which is taught or which is learned, is conceptual and it is a process of ideation and hence doesn't help at all. If any, it does the opposite, namely reinforcing the self, the father, the petty self. So every time you perform a karma seeking phala, or you don't even perform the karma, only you seek phala. <coughs> For karma you plan to perform but are unable to perform. Thala seeking remains. In doing so, you are reinforcing that the shadow called person. The shadow person. So, there is a novel written by a Scandinavian novelist in which the hero, the, the, the leading character, and his ego. His ego only. And uh, now, who prevails? Who prevails? So the novel is a bit intricate. I don't remember the details of the novel, but the point is, the ego prevails. And the ego conspires against the guy, the, the truthful guy. The ego, the ego, ego is the shadow. It conspires against the original. And in the, the novel ends when the original, the ego, it takes over the lady loved by the original. He, he, he steals the lady loved by the original and uh, stabs and uh, assassinates the original. That is the story. Would you get the spirit of the story? That is how our life ends. The ego kills the original and the ego prevails till the last breath. That is the spirit of that story. Therefore, uh, in seeking Param, you lose uh, any chance of self-realization and moksha. That is Nirodhaka. You see, phala, seeking phala reinforces the person. That is how I am trying to connect. Phala connected to the person. Because uh, in seeking phala you become selfish. Because that, that petty self, the small self, in that sense it is, you become selfish. Selfishness feeds on phala, phala feeds on selfishness. It is like addiction, smoking addiction. You smoke, therefore you are addicted. You addict, you are addicted because you smoke. You continue smoking, you continue to be addicted more and more. And because you are addicted more and more, you smoke more and more. Phala and, uh, phala and uh, the false person. You see, the worldly life, the religious life, and spirituality. Three, three, are, three levels are there. Sometimes I call spirituality the true religion. That is how I call it. It is called like that, not that I call it. In the worldly life, the phala, the self, dominates. Small self. 
In the religious life also, unfortunately, the same thing happens. The phala and its, its counterpart, the small self, dominates. And uh, you come to spiritual life and uh, still allow in some form or the other phala and the small self dominate, you have uh, messed up the whole thing. Now there is no chance of freedom or moksha. Because uh, the selfishness, which is the seeking of phala by the small self, is called selfishness. Swarthaparatvam. It breeds hatred, spite. Somebody you don't like, you hate somebody. Because uh, it is connected with uh, your seeking something. You are seeking something. Therefore, the selfishness breeds malice, jealousy. Because the phala that you seek, you don't have it yet, somebody else already has it. Jealousy. And then hypocrisy. You are seeking, but outwardly you present yourself as somebody who is not seeking but giving. That kind of hypocrisy. And there is a contradiction. You are giving because you are seeking dana. You do dana because you seek more than that. You say a person came across some very special entity, Bhutam, Mahadyaksham, and asked, What are you? It said, I am God. Then uh, immediately this man got a tremendous courage born out of frustration and caught hold of the God by collar and asked, You made so many promises, I have done hundred rituals till now, I have yet to get phala. What are you doing? <laughs> and he was the <laughs> so, this is how the phala people's psychology operates. You see, the phala people, they have become so selfish, they are compared with a monkey. When there is fire, forest fire, the monkey, the, the floor is very hot, and the kid is hanging from the tummy, then you know what the monkey does, pulls out the kid and puts it under its feet. So that it is protected from heat of the forest fire. That is the monkey behavior. It does. It, it, that is how it does. It is a mother monkey, all right, but not when the fire is on. <laughs> then it uses the kidney, the kid's body, to protect its feet from intense heat. The selfish guy is like that. The ego, it is, the power-seeking ego, is like that. Therefore, <laughs> so. You see, now I, I give you another comparison. Suppose you, are, you, you, are, you come across a person who puts so much emphasis on his dress, a safari suit and all that, but he doesn't exercise at all and he doesn't eat food properly. Now, what is he doing? Is he doing any good for himself? Outwardly he appears very great, but in world, very, very good, but in worldly, he is a sick guy. These phala seeking people are like that. Outwardly they are religious, worshipping God. They are not worshipping God, they are worshipping their egoity. Through God. God is an accomplice to fulfill their uh, self seeking nature. So, they are, they are sick, not, may not be physically or psychologically, but they are spiritually sick people. That is how we look at this selfishness. You see, therefore, you, this person, take, puts all the emphasis 
on the dress but neglects the physical health. Similarly, you put all the emphasis on the ego, ego and its wants and its desires and in the process you neglect the true self. You, you, you compromise the soul for the sake of some silly transient phalas results. So, therefore, uh, when there is, when you practice this kind of religion, <laughs> am I too harsh? I sound it like that for myself. <laughs> Let me have a sip of water. <laughs> When you practice this kind of religion, which is entirely geared to fulfill the desires of the egoic self, then you are preparing the ground for spiritual death. So, in spite of appearances, etc. And also, assume that Falam will come. Um, you see, you have to believe, you know. It comes out of the category of belief. You have to believe. You believe it and say it is pramana. Look at that. Look at that. Mimamsakas, I am talking of Mimamsakas. Vedantins pramana is not same as the Mimamsakas pramana. The students of Vedanta have to examine uh, their heads. The pramana is not the same in the case of Mimamsa as well as Vedanta. In the Vedanta Sabha, where all these great scholars were present, I proposed that what kind of pramana is uh, Shastra in Purva Mimamsa and Uttara Mimamsa? Do you think it is the same kind of pramana? You are wrong. It is not the same. In Purva Mimamsa, the word Shabda Pramana, if you carefully look at it, it translates into belief. Whereas in Uttara Mimamsa, it translates into a tool of self-inquiry. That, that is the tremendous difference between the two. Therefore, Mimamsa has very, very cunning, I have to say, or deceptive, knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously, um, flaunting a Shabda Pramana when it is a, but a belief. So, how nice it sounds. Suppose you say, I believe in something, I believe in heaven. Then those who say we believe in heaven, we look down upon them. Then what are you doing? No, Shabda Pramana about heaven. So, so it is a Pramanantara Anadhigamya, Pramanantara Abhadita. What? Heaven? What? Is it? What a cleverness, I tell you. It is belief. <laughs> Naturally, belief, how can it be Pramanantara Bhigamya? It cannot be. And how can it be Pramanantara Bhagita? That also cannot be. Because a believing person, he lives in a shroud. Eh? And therefore, uh, therefore, this kind of a selfishness, religious, could be. It, uh, it invariably is followed by deformation. You get that. The person uh, seeks an apparent uh, name and fame in the society and he gets it to begin with. Eventually he gets defamed. The phala is a shastra. Phala that you get uh, deformation, destruction, disappointment, and failure. That is where you end up. Phala is like that, all phalas. So, you see, we made a mistake in seeking phala and assuming that phala is the all-important thing. And because of that we suffer. It is the accumulated karmas that make us suffer. 
Karmas accumulate. Karmas performed by the egoic self for a, with an end in view for a result. They accumulate and they play havoc with our lives. In Phala there is another tremendous issue. Now, what is this world? How do you want to look at this world? A, a, a person seeking Phala, he looks at this world as real. He has to. You see, a businessman came to me. Swamiji, the business is in some kind of gold drums. Can you suggest something um, to improve it? I asked him, what do you mean? I did not study MBA. <laughs> I don't have any experience of running a business. Sometimes I got in a chemistry laboratory, that is all the experience I had. How do you want me to help you in setting the business track? Then he said, uh, no, no, not like that. Some spiritual or religious help you can give. I can give, but are you ready to take it? Are you willing to take it? You may not be willing to take it. You may not be even ready to take it. I mean, your structure is not is not capable of taking what I give you. No, no, let us give a try. Okay. I will give a try because I love the person. I want him to be happy. So what happened to your business? What was the profit earlier when it was good? Twenty, twenty-five percent. Now when it is bad, that is what you say, what are the profits now? Uh, hovering between 7 to 10 percent. Then what is your problem? <laughs> no, no, loans have to be paid back. Then how many cars you own? The two of them. And which of the, which, of, which is the best and newly purchased car? You have one car. Sell it off. How much you will get? 20 lakhs. Pay the loan. This is the spirituality that I teach. <laughs> really, this is the spirituality that I teach. Huh? So pay your taxes, live a simple life, cut down, downgrade your lifestyle, cut down your expenses, be simple and be happy. The, 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 you, you have to approach it. This is the Vedantic. This is true religion. I am not in religious. What I am saying is a true religion. Therefore, in seeking the phalam, ashashvatam, Maharshi says, means the phala is ashashvata, means time bound and hence unreal. So, in seeking the phala, you consider the worldly objects as real, and then uh, you are attached to them, to the worldly objects. Worldly objects are not objects. They are not existential. They are names and forms. Names, mane, they are verbal or linguistic. Ghata, when you say it is linguistic, vacharam manam. What Vedanta did you study? Vachāraṁ manam māne kya hota hai? Vachāha, vachā māne vachāha. Arabhyate. It is linguistic. It is not existential. What is existential? Murtikaityeva satyam. Sadeva satyam. Murtikaityeva satyam. That is, sat is existential. That is existential, not ghatā. You use ghatā example in a wrong way. That's why I said this. You don't understand that example for whatever reason. Therefore, resort to the right example, produce up example. There, the likelihood of you making a mistake is less. In the case of Gata, just blindly go into a, some kind of a reality to the world. It is not acceptable in Vedanta. You want to become a Dvaita Vadi? Is that what you are trying to do? Heda Vedavada you want to adopt? Study Purnamadaha Bhashya, you will know. 
Therefore, this world is not real. It is unreal. It is an appearance. Pratibhasita Mubari. It is like a serpent, uh, the rope serpent. You want to seek the phalas of the world and get attached to the names and forms. They are a name and form. That is what it is. It is linguistic name and it is observational form. It is not existential. That is what the world is. And you are seeking things of that. If you seek the phala, you are sure to suffer and remain disappointed. That is a sure thing. Gati nirodhakam. You are very seeking of the phala, whether you get it or not. You don't get, you seek ten times, you get one time or two times. Then blames the planets and stars. There is no problem with planets and stars. They are doing fine. Only all mistake lies with you. All problem lies with you. So gati nirodhakam. So, aha. Uttamam sattviki metam gati mahur manishinaha. So, you, you see, you tamoguna, you conquer it by meaningful activity. And then rajoguna, you conquer it by meditation, by abiding in the pure awareness, that is sattva. And sattva guna, you conquer it by sattva. Tamaha rajasa jayet, rajaha sattva jayet, sattvam sattva jayet. Therefore, just by abiding in sattva, you go out of sattva into gunatita. That is the gati. That is the gati. That movement from tamas to rajas, rajas to sattva, sattva to beyond the, the sattva, means gunatita. That movement takes you into moksha. That is the gati, moksha. And uh, in uh, sattva, what are the primary characteristics of sattva? Vairagya, Inner, uh, and viveka and inner quietude, that is the sattva. Dispassion and inner quietude, that is the sattva. And that uh, takes you to moksha, that is the gati, that is the movement, spiritual movement. And uh, you, this, uh, this uh, seeking of uh, worldly things, of this world or the other world, drishta drishta, phala bhoga mitrasnaha. Whatever you see. You see, you say Nastikas are bad people because they do not seek the other world. They seek this world. They don't seek the other world. Therefore they are bad people. You are good people. Because you seek this world as well as the other world. <laughs> Nastikas are bad or not, we don't know. They could be very ethical. And in that sense they could be good also. <laughs> anyway, that is a different point, I will discuss it some other time. Therefore, gati nirodhakam, therefore seeking phalas, uh, therefore it, uh, it uh, prevents uh, gati. So when we were, uh, we were chanting, we used to do all these things. We were chanting the Vishnu Sahasranama. Uh, the elder, my father and other Sacharya told us, the Uttara Pitika you don't need, they told us. You don't need. If Sahasranama is good, you chant it. Because it is philosophical Sahasranama. All the other Sahasranamas are Puranic. And they are uh, imitations. They are not original. Original is Vishnu Sahasranama. Puranic, it is, it is uh, philosophical. And the Palashvati you don't need. Palashya putra, thila pate putra, uvana, what about putri? <laughs> what about putri? You see, in this entire literature, nobody desires putri. How then, how humanity moves forward, I don't know. Very amazing. It is, it is as if in that uh, thinking, the, the, uh, the female doesn't exist. Only in uh, grammar it exists, Sri Prithya. Nowhere it doesn't exist. Then if uh, female, uh, femininity doesn't exist, then uh, how the world must go forward? Amazing. 
enough. Let us move forward. Ishwarar Pitam Nechaya Kratam Chitta Shodhakam Mukti Sadhakam Kratam Kratam Karma, we are not suggesting you give up karma. You do karma. You have to do karma. As long as one lives, one performs karma. I am speaking karma, you are listening karma, krata. It is not nakrata, krata. It is a ichaya nakrata, no. That is called prasajya pratishedha. When you take the negative particle na to the verb, it is called prasajya pratishedha. Then, sir, it, 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 it presents before you to be done? No. That is called prasajya pratishedha. That is not here. It is not ichayana karutam. It is so paryudasa it is. It applies to the word immediately. So nechaya. Karutam. Nechaya. Anichaya. One kind of naitat purusha samasa. Naitat nai samasa. With nechaya also it becomes. In the place of na, because achi is following, an will come. So anichaya. That is one kind of samasa. One variety. Another variety, same night with Purusha, and it is also Nechaya. So Na remains as Na, and the Sandhi is a must. You cannot avoid the Sandhi. So because it is Samasa. So Nechaya Mane Anichaya. Mane Akamanaya. Do, do the right work. Once again, do take a lot here and beat the waters. No, no. We are not, you should not trivialize it like that. Continue the pickpocket. No. No, no. That is not an example. For God's sake, that is not an example. Okay? Because we are not, uh, we are not studying Dharma Shastra. In Dharma Shastra, there will be a discussion which is the right karma and which is the wrong karma. This is not Dharma Shastra. That part is over already. It is over already. This is Moksha Shastra. Therefore here, karma means the enjoined action only. The righteous action, the enjoined action, aimed at seeking a phala. That is the karma which is censured in the earlier verse. But karma per se is not dismissed. Karma continues. Krutam. <coughs> so, uh, how krutam uh, nechaya? Without a desire, you have to do it. In a desireless way, you have to do the karma. Desireless. Now, you see, look at your life and see the operation of desire. How this? It is not about something I explain and therefore you conclude. That movement doesn't help because the explanations are good and your conclusions are right and you go out and continue your old lifestyle. This is what is called absorbing the new into the old, like a sponge. The sponge is dirty, you put some scent into it, into it, it absorbs it. It doesn't give up its dirt. So that kind of uh, these explanations and conclusions, etc., it is a game of the mind, it is, this mind game. It, it, ha it has its uh, role, I suppose, but uh, you have to cross it. People fail to cross it because they don't know what is, they don't know that this is the game that is going on, the game of ideation that is going on. And that there is something beyond this game of ideation because this game is very engaging and fulfilling. It is like you you have somebody puts an ice cream in your hand and you eat it and then you feel very good. A similar that is for the body. A similar thing happens to the brain cells. Explorations and conclusions that that is like ice cream to the brain cells. They love it. You know, they are trained for it. And therefore, the process of ideation, it goes on and on and on. The person's life ends without understanding that what he did is only ideation and nothing else. 
So you have to cross the barrier of ideation and see. No, no, presently we listen and we explain, you explain, we listen and let us arrive at our own convictions or conclusions. Then eventually that seeing will happen. Those who are waiting for seeing, for the knowledge, they won't get knowledge. You know what they get. Therefore, you see, you see, the speaker cannot make you see. You have to see, you have to make yourself see. The speaker, you listen to the speaker's words, don't convert them into ideas, and uh, try to see. Now, now at 9.35, you try to see. Can you? Or did you understand what I am struggling to convey? At least that is a saving grace. Therefore, a river is flowing and suddenly a boulder comes in its way. The river bursts into splashes and produces a lot of foam with a thunderous sound. Similarly, so the life is flowing, the boulder of desire and hope. This hope is also like that. So don't think that the speaker is suggesting you a hopeless life. That is not what I am suggesting. You should know that there is such a difference. So I told somebody, don't be very logical, be loving. You know what the person did? Swami Tatmavidananda suggests we should be logical. Did I suggest you should be logical? I said, don't be so much logical, be loving. So that means I asked you to be logical. That is the meaning you get. You should go and join a high school and learn some English properly. <laughs> Therefore, when the life is flowing smoothly, the, the, the desire comes, like a border has come. You see, I had a conversation. It was such a sad thing that I had that conversation. A young lady studying in the college, the parents love her obviously. The father is uh, some, uh, some senior clerk in a government department, and the mother is housewife. They are the middle class people, doing fine. Now this young girl is studying in the college, they are educating her, paying fees and all that. She wanted a, a diamond ring, a diamond necklace maybe, not a ring. Ring is what a fiancé gives, I suppose. <laughs> necklace she wanted. She wanted a diamond necklace. She uh, expressed her desire before the mother. Mother tried to convince her, mother tried to admonish her, eh, our, uh, what are we talking, our status doesn't permit such desires. So keep quiet. And she started crying. And then father came, why are you crying? So the mother told, she doesn't reply. Mother, mother told, she wants a diamond necklace. Because her colleagues, one, one of her close friends in the, in the college, a colleague, another girl, she is rich. And so she put on a diamond necklace and she looks very good. She and everybody is looking at her because the diamond necklace is very special. Then nobody is looking at myself. Therefore she wants a diamond necklace for herself. The father told her, no, no, it is wrong to desire like that. It is wrong to have such a desire. You know what that girl told me? I was, I, I was there. Why should I be there? It is my misfortune that I was there. And I should not listen. If I, I should not see that I will close eyes, but I should not listen. How? How not to listen? So, then the girl told, Swamiji told me that you can desire. That is the reply she gave. Look at that. So Swamiji is still have desires? Is that what Swamiji's are supposed to do? 
That's why he said Khan Market Gang of Acharya. <laughs> you should not do that kind of a disturbance. People have already desires. You need not put desires into their mind. They are already ignorant enough to continue with to live with desires. If any, we should tell them, try to put some wisdom into their heads, desires are bad. You know? What about the desire for moksha, mumoksha? Even that you have to give up. Siddhya Siddhyo Samo Bhutva Samatma Yoga Uchyate. You say the verse, don't look into it. Much less you look into the bhashya there. Look at the bhashya, what bhashya Tara says. I will not tell you. You go and look at it. So that you will understand what bhashya Tara means there. Therefore, even the desire for moksha, you have to give up. A day comes when you have to give it up. That is when you will realize the truth of the Self. Therefore, the life is flowing smoothly, the desire and hope, they, they become borders that come across the flow of life suddenly, and the life is now shattered. Therefore, Immediately the flow of life is converted into anger, disappointment and worry and fear. See, Kama Yesha Krodha is not Kama Yesha. So, Kama Krodha is Tatha Lobha. Asma Deta Trayam Trijet. Kama desire. Fulfilled lead to Lobha, unfulfilled lead to Krodha. That's why three. Trivitharma Ragasyadun Varam, the three express highways to hell. <coughs> three. No, no, why three? Make it one. Okay. Out of three, which one? Kamaha. Because Kamaha takes to Krodha, Kamaha takes to Lobha. Therefore, drop Krodha and Lobha. You have not dropped anything. As long as you retain Kama, you have retained everything. Therefore, desire. It leads to worry. <laughs> Uh, when uh, not yet fulfilled, leads to greed and uh, attachment and again worry that you may lose. Therefore, so whenever uh, there is an effort and the desired expectation doesn't come, you get all these things, anger and all that. Therefore, many people say, uh, so why people say, uh, in, in, in other places they say, uh, Tirupati Swami is superior, more powerful than uh, Kaya, she, uh, this is Swami, Kalahasti Swami. Where we have arrived at? Yeah. I asked him why. Just let me know. He fulfills desires whereas this guy doesn't fulfill desires. <laughs> so the religion has gone down to that level. And uh, therefore, um, so there is a, a, a lot of disappointment with gods. This is Kali Yuga. This is another fad, Kali Yuga. Why Kali Yuga? There is no Kali Yuga around. Kali Yuga is in you. You know what is Kali Yuga? is time, epoch. And what is Kali? Kali Kalahaha. Conflict. That is the Kali. Now you tell me, do you have conflict or not? That is the Kali. And where is it in your heart? Why is it? Because of desire. Kalahaha. Therefore, <coughs> it is our own desire. Our desires. Jato Ekavachanam. Our own desires. Which is and which are the source of pain, sorrow, hunger, anger, then hurt, then despair, frustration, worry, fear. Now you may ask, suppose I am desireless, none of these things will be there? No, they will not be there. You try. You try. Then should I stop working? You don't stop working. Krutam. What you need to do, the duty, duty only. Because once the desire is put aside, 
the entire gamut of kamya karmas is thrown aside gada 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 all of it is thrown nothing remains entire kamya karmas and even all the prayers they they, they they lose their significance only one or two or three prayers remain and the entire book from this end to that end. Huh? and when i see some of these books i feel like saying are you have to put some head into it before making a book of prayers what kind of prayers you are putting there they are not uplifting they are uh, pamper they are uh, pondering to the pandering to the i don't know they are not the right word they are appealing to the desires so you should not put those prayers you should put the right kind of prayers you don't know you don't know at least you should ask someone who knows you should be humble enough to do that therefore i don't know but i don't ask anybody so i remain in my own ignorance therefore so the one who has no desires has no desires he is he, he has already rooted out anger frustration worries etc so people are frustrated people people are frustrated not because of their actions actions do not make you frustrated actions make you healthy but heart that you will remain healthy it is your desires are responsible for your frustrations all frustrations your desires are responsible if a man if a person has no desires he is the king of kings so one cannot enter the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven you understand in its metaphorical sense as long as one entertains desires because desirelessness is godliness which is moksha brahman cannot be realized unless you rise above your selfish desires so all this plurality which seems to be the basis of your desires all this plurality is only an appearance and the differentiation this versus that this kind of differentiation therefore i i want this i don't want that this is ishta prapti anishta parihara i was attending a vedha sabha i used to do that nowadays i did used to be the of less energy but also i'm tired i'm tired oh, they are all scholars but uh, their scholarship is uh, um, is uh, is verbal and ideation and ideation nothing more and i know the process of ideation i can see that there are they are unable to see it and they are not open also then why to attend one scholar he started his uh, lecture veda ha kaha what is veda ishta prapti anishta pariharaya alaukika ha upaya ha veda so to gain what we desire and to keep away what we don't desire what we hate there are those things you know some uh, like loss in business you want to keep it and you want to throw it away that is anishta parihara and for that there are many methods available in the world suppose you want something some money you can do business and get it suppose you want to avoid uh, shani uh, sorry you want to avoid the loss in the business you can uh, engage one mba person and take good advice and do proper business practice and uh, avoid the loss these are called laukika upaya and the laukika upaya veda has nothing to do with it veda is so superior that it gives you alaukika upaya means what is the alaukika upaya like i want to make to make a lot of money ishta prapti what is the alaukika upaya veda tells you this business losses are coming i want to avoid it what is the alaukika upaya veda tells you appa you have brought veda that is that the veda that the vedantin is interested in there may be some such veda but you that is the definition of veda and you pay your obedience to that veda that kind of veda so i objected 
I said that you, your definition of Veda sounds rather unhappy because we have a reverence to the Veda and the way you presented it, you presented it in such a poor light. He was a stunned. In what poor light I presented? I presented it in a glorious way. <laughs> then I told him, what you call Ishta and Anishta, is it part and parcel of this world? This world or other world? Of course, yes. It is unreal. Your Ishta and Anishta is unreal. Huh? Therefore, what you call Ishta is deceptive and what you call Anishta is deceptive. Maybe we don't need all this Ishta. Maybe we need some Anishta that will uplift us. Therefore, this world is illusory. This, this dreadful differentiation of the world into Ishta and Anishta is, is, is illusory. And uh, the desired objects are deceptive. It is all a big dream. You see, if you kill a tiger or a python, that is not a great achievement. You have done a good job if you have looked at your selfish desires and annihilated them. That is when you have done a good job. Therefore, renounce the temptations of this world I will put it in a harsh words, be dead to these desirable or desired things, desirable, be dead to the things of this world and the things of the other world. You have to add the other world to include the religion, because the religion has become like that, the religion of the masses it has acquired these uh, unfortunate things. <coughs> Not because of the mistake of the simple people, but because of the mistake of the gurus and acharyas and uh, these people. They have misled. Swayam confused. Param confused ayanti. So, um, like avidyaya vantare vartamanaha nandramya mana pariyante mudha. Therefore, Renounce the temptations of this world, be dead to this world, arise from the sleep of ignorance, be free, allow the activity go on, to go on. Nechaya karatam. Allow the activity to go on. In fact, I will say, hammer on, work, work harder and harder. So, be devoted to the work without ever seeking the result thereof. Understand what Sri Krishna said, Karmanya Vadhika Raste, Ma Phaleshu Kadajana. So understand that verse properly. So suppose we don't seek the phala, because we are not seeking, God may not give us. We have, you can argue either way, you know, you can argue any way you want. There is a proverb in Telugu, unless you ask, even the mother won't give you. Yes. So, now, is that how you support the desire? So, unless you ask, the mother won't give you. Is it correct? It is wrong, you know. Mother gives without asking, you know. And if the person is sick, mother won't give. If the person is healthy, mother gives. You know that? And uh, mother gives one kind of food to one child and gives another kind of food to another child. Your example is bogus, I tell you. It is a wrong example. Uh -huh. And uh, you see, suppose uh, I don't desire, then God doesn't give me phala. Because I don't desire, so God deprives me of phala. And then how can I be happy? Harmaniya vadhikaraste ma phala so all people who are getting phalas are happy, I don't have any phala, I will remain unhappy. Sir, you got it wrong. You know why? Phala is not happiness. It is the illusion of happiness. Whereas uh, karma that you do without seeking the result, that you see uh, the karma, 
there is joy in karma. She, yesterday I was saying Shri Krishna was a revolutionary. You should not, when I say Shri Krishna, you should not allow the Radha Krishna to come into the mind. We are not talking of Radha Krishna. In fact, my sincere advice to you is don't bother about Radha Krishna. Keep it aside. Be devoted to Gita Krishna. Gita Krishna is a philosopher. He is not a dancer and a musician. And the flute is symbolic. Not that he was carrying a flute around like some of our American friends <laughs> carrying guitar around. What do you mean by all that? Does it not, did it not sound silly to you? <laughs> Therefore, no, all, not all that. Sri Krishna is Jagat Guru. He is the Jagat Guru. Why Jagat Guru? Because his message is universal. Not that he promoted all around and converted all the people. <laughs> his message is universal. And be devoted to Sri Krishna, the Gita Krishna. And then, uh, so Sri Krishna is a revolutionary. He is not a traditionalist. You know what is the tradition? When Sri Krishna, you see, Please don't mind my saying like that. My father asked me, what is the essence of Brahma Sutra? Eh? He asked me, hey, hey, you are studying Vedanta for some time. Eh? You tell me what is the essence of Brahma Sutra, the main message of Brahma Sutra. I said I did not get it. I got this piece, that piece, this piece meal I got. He said the essence of Brahma Sutra is refutation of Sankhya philosophy. That is what Brahma Sutra is. There are many other details, but that is what it is. Then I asked him, do you know what is Gita, essence of Gita? I said, Gita asks us this, that, no, no, essence. Uh, I don't know. A refutation of Purva Vinamsa. That is what Gita is. From A to Z, it is Purva Vinamsa refutation. It says, revolt against some of the structures that are put in place by Kumarana Bhatta, who is his own contemporary, Shankara's contemporary. Then he asked me a third question. Out of the Prasthanatraya, which is the difficult, most difficult, I have by then I have studied the entire Prasthanatraya, which is the most difficult. I was about to say Brahma Sutra, but I held back. I asked him, you tell? <laughs> you tell which is difficult? He said, Gita Bhashya is the most difficult. So this is some of the things which remain in this head. Most of the other things are gone. So, karmanye vadhikāraste ma phaleshu kadāchana. You are, the mimamsakas said, karma dukkha rūpam. You go and check any mimamsa book. Even the basic mimamsa book, artha sangraha, with some meaningful commentary, if you see, there you come across the statement dukkha rupam karma. Ayasa rupa, dukkha rupa. That is how they look at it. There is a strive, a struggle to perform an action. It is like digging a pit. It is not easy in the hot sun. You have to sweat a lot. And so karma, homa is also like that. Dhuma dhum rita. Like that the smoke will come into the eyes. And you have to offer the heat in the summer, the, the, the rituals are performed in a tropical country like India. It's not easy. So there is no joy in karma. There is only, uh, there is only strife, suffering and uh, fitting. Ayasa is fitting in karma. Sukha is in phala. Phala. It looks so attractive, but let me tell you, this is very superficial, very sthula. It appeals to the uneducated and the illiterate and the innocent public. And if you have 10,000 public in a panel, they will all clap. You have, you have to train them also, they will clap. Uh, a particular form of psychophancy. <laughs> But what Sri Krishna said, you know what he said? 
There is no joy in phala. There is joy in karma. How to know? Give up the desire for the result thereof. Give it up. Then your focus will be on the karma. And then you will discover the joy in karma. You tell me, just I give you the ready-made example. I am not saying anything about this speaker. Speaker is not the issue. Where is joy in uh, taking, in explaining a verse of Gita, in uh, expounding on a verse of Gita or in Dakshina? Where is joy? You tell me. In Dakshina there is burden, not uh, joy. So when you put some Dakshina into my pocket, you have put some burden on my head. I, now I have to do something about it. Huh? I am going my way, I am free. Somebody says Namaskar. Now I am not free anymore. <laughs> the freedom is gone. Now I have to respond to him. And then uh, uh, he, he must be, his expectation, if, it, if, it, if any, it should not be reduced. And the response must be most appropriate, etc. Whereas he did not do Namaskar. Oh, what a freedom it is. <laughs> Therefore, uh, there is joy in the vision, in the act, there is joy. Suppose uh, you do Homa, there is joy in it if you do it properly. So, Saptate Agne Samidhas Sapta Jifvaha Sapta Rishaya Sapta Dhamma Priyani Sapta Hotra Sapta Dhatva Yajanti Sapta Yoni Rapurva Svadhritena Svaha Agnaye Sapta Vata Idanamama There is joy in it. Even to think of it there is joy. So you miss the joy when you are focused on the result thereof. Therefore Sri Krishna is the revolutionary who has put the Mimamsaka thought upside down. He put it on its head. Don't seek phala. Be connected to the karma. Adhikara sammantha. Adhikara phala sammantha. Karma nyeva adhikara ha. Adhikara phala sammantha. That is the Mimamsaka's definition. Therefore, so Adhikara Vidhi, that, that is how, uh, I don't remember the details, therefore the phala you remove, because karmanyeva adhikara ste, adhikara phala, phala you cannot put, phala is coming later, therefore samanthaha, be connected, that is the connectedness is the adhikara. Many meanings are given, you have to give the meaning of the mimamsakas when the topic is of the mimamsakas. So, the connectedness with the karma, put it, uh, you hold on to that. The connectedness with the thala, give it up. I have something more to say about the desires, thala, etc. Nature artitam. And then uh, Ishwar artitam, you have to combine it with Ishwar artitam. I will do that. Om Purna Madha Purna Madha Purna Purna Madha Shyate Purna Shyate Purna Madha Purna Madha Purna Madha Purna Madha